بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم سٹوڈنٹس اینڈ ویورس ویلکم ٹو دا کورس آف کلاؤڈ کمپیوٹنگ وی آر ان ویک نمبر سکسٹین اینڈ ان دس لیکچر آئی ول ٹاک اباؤٹ سیکیورٹی ان دا کلاؤڈس اف یو ریمبر ان دا لاسٹ لیکچر وی ٹاکڈ اباؤٹ نیٹ ورک سیکیورٹی ان جنرل وی ڈیفائن وٹ security is that is being the state of being free from danger or injury uh, we saw some of security goals uh, which are also called security services objectives properties components or CIA trait or security trait and they are confidentiality integrity and availability we discuss about confidentiality integrity availability and also some other features of network security like accountability uh, like uh, authenticity authentication authorization etc uh, we also saw some security attacks and we classified them into two types and they were passive attacks and active attacks and we saw different types of uh, uh, attacks that uh, an intruder can actually perform over the secure communication uh, similarly we saw some services which are related with the security and those are the authentication uh, and then the access control data confidentiality integrity non repudiation Uh, and also we explore some security threats uh, and we basically classify them into two types they were intruders and malicious software and we saw different types of malicious softwares and their effect on the computer uh, networks uh, we also uh, saw how we can secure our networks our data with the help of cryptography and we elaborate some basic concepts that are related with the cryptography Uh, in today lecture uh, we will be talking more about security but w- in the context of cloud uh, you will observe that most of the concepts they are actually the same that we study in the previous week however uh, we will try to apply them to the data storage or data transmission in the clouds so uh, let us start with the introduction to the cloud security uh, let me be give you a brief uh, background or context uh, for any enterprise uh, when we talk about the cloud we are actually referring to the different enterprises different organizations or even individuals that are using the services over the cloud so for any enterprise any individual any organization Uh, sharing infrastructure in cloud computing environment is uh, like a person going to some public place with valuable assets with valuable belongings yani jab bhi hum cloud security ke bare mein baat karte hain to usko samajhne ke liye ek example hum lete hain and that is ke for example koi banda hai uske paas koi valuable assets hain اور وہ کہیں پہ کسی پبلک لوکیشن میں جانا چاہ رہا ہے سو اینی رانگ انٹینٹ مے اکر اینی ٹائم ٹو دوز ویلیوبل ایسٹس آپ کو پتہ ہے کہ ڈفرینٹ رسک جو ہیں وہ انوالو ہیں ان کے ویلیوبل ایسٹس جو ہیں وہ کوئی ان سے چھین سکتا ہے loss is also possible to the valuable assets uh, similarly agar loss na ho koi usse chine bhi nahi so there are chances that it will get damaged in the public places uh, in the same case uh, moving your sensitive files or moving your sensitive data out of an enterprise own network security boundary it will cause security concerns and the public place here is the public cloud remember we can uh, divide cloud computing into different categories like public private hybrid community etc most of the common category of the cloud is the public cloud uh, where mostly our data and our valuable assets exist 
तो अगर आप अपने डेटा को सेंसिटिव डेटा को या सेंसिटिव फाइल्स को मूव करते हैं बियॉन्ड योर पर्सनल सेटअप इन द पब्लिक क्लाउड सो सिक्योरिटी कंसर्न्स आर देयर और इस कोर्स के स्टार्ट में मैंने आपको क्लाउड की कैरेस्टरिस्टिक्स में एडवांटेजेस और डिसएडवांटेजेस में ये बात बताई थी कि वन ऑफ द कंसर्न अबाउट द क्लाउड कंप्यूटिंग इज सिक्योरिटी एंड प्राइवेसी यू हैव नो इंफॉर्मेशन वेयर योर डेटा एक्चुअली रिजाइड्स ऑन विच सर्वर इन मोस्ट ऑफ द केसेज यू एक्चुअली हैव नो इंफॉर्मेशन अबाउट द सिक्योरिटी मेकेनिज्म दैट द प्रोवाइडर्स इज एक्चुअली ऑफरिंग यू सो due to this security concern actually uh, implementation of uh, strong identity management and access control mechanism they are actually uh, very much important in the cloud scenarios in the cloud environment so security is about a uh, development of resistance to damage or protecting a system from any harm uh, if you have uh, these features you can say that your system is actually secure and security is a major issue is a major concern uh, for any computing environment including the cloud itself computing uh, system security you can also say that it is actually the protection of the system itself but not only the system but also the data that is stored on the system so basically you have to secure your system and also you have to secure your data uh, when an IT service consumer uh, it could be an individual an organization an enterprise uh, when they plan to migrate to the cloud especially to the public cloud a uh, much of the computing infrastructure moves into the control of a third party and they are the cloud service provider yani aapka aapke data ke upar aapka control nahi rehta you are actually handing over your data to the third party provider to the cloud service provider when you are migrating to the cloud so the risk are higher a uh, shifting consumer sensitive data into the control of a third party cloud service provider it actually increases and also it complicate the risk uh, landscape is this outsourcing makes it harder for the consumer to maintain confidentiality integrity and availability of the information yani jab tak data aapke apne control mein hota hai to jo cia tried के जो फीचर्स हैं वो आप एक्चुअली इजीली कंपैरेटिवली वो आप अप्लाई कर सकते हैं नॉट ओनली टू द सिस्टम बट आल्सो टू द डेटा लेकिन जब आप माइग्रेट करते हो टू अ थर्ड पार्टी क्लाउड सर्विस प्रोवाइडर सो यू आर यू आर एक्चुअली इंक्रीजिंग द कॉम्प्लेक्सिटी एंड आल्सो द रिस्क ऑफ मेंटेनिंग द कॉन्फिडेंशियलिटी इंटीग्रिटी एंड अवेलेबिलिटी ऑफ डेटा so uh, for a business to gain full advantage from the cloud based computing actually reliable service uh, security related services they are important you have to make sure that what services uh, what services you are offering they are actually secure you must have to be sure that you are actually respecting the privacy of the user and the data that the user is storing at uh, at your servers right so that is important from providers point of view so uh, due to these reasons uh, it is important to understand how the security is an important aspect of the cloud architecture because uh, it will actually uh, uh, it will actually spans across all of the layers of the reference models uh, is not concern security is not a concern of the physical layer alone or it is not a concern of the application layer alone we actually uh, need to provide security mechanism and at each and every layer of the of the reference models uh, so uh, based on this information security in the cloud is actually ranges from the physical infrastructure security to the application uh, layer security right okay so cloud security in summary it is all about securing your data and applications that actually operate 
in the cloud cloud security it actually refers to the controls uh, that must be implemented in order to prevent the loss of data the loss of information or resources that uh, belongs to a cloud service provider or its customers so there are two aspects of the security from this definition if you if you see uh, we are actually interested in making secure the data of the customer and also the services uh, the the resources that actually belongs to the providers so uh, from this definition the two aspects are that they are that we are actually trying to make the data of the customer secure and also the resources of the provider secure so this is important Cl security in cloud is actually important for both uh, the provider as well as for the consumer uh, we can also say that uh, uh, security in cloud security in cloud is actually a set of uh, control based safeguards and technologies uh, that are actually uh, protection that actually provide the protection they are actually designed to protect the resources which are stored online from from different threats or attacks like leakages like theft of information or data losses so if your data is secure from loss if it is secure from the theft it is secure from leakages then you can actually say that your data is secure in the cloud uh, last point about security in the cloud is that uh, cloud solution provides uh, providers they actually have to implement a variety of security control mechanism for the services that they offer and these services are software as a service platform as a service and infrastructure as a service as a service so it is an important aspect that could be implemented in any of the service that the provider is actually offering it could be as aas it could be paas or it could be infrastructure as a service well uh, here we have a comparison between the security in the clouds and traditional security uh, some of the main components or some of the main features are mentioned here for example in the cloud security we are actually migrating our data to a third party service provider while in traditional approach uh, our data resides in house we, uh, we have our own data centers, our own security mechanisms, uh, our own security policies. So actually everything is in our control. However, in case of cloud, uh, we are actually uh, migrating the stuff to a third party services providers. If you are using cloud services, so providing security is actually a low, uh, actually have a low upfront infrastructure investment or cost while if we are implementing our own uh, security services inside our own data centers for example or inside our own organization then uh, we have to deal with high upfront charges in case of cloud we can actually scale the services the secure services uh, very quickly while scaling in traditional uh, environment is actually a slow process comparatively in the cloud as we uh, know from the beginning that efficient utilization of the resources is possible however in our own traditional environment the efficiency is low uh, in case of cloud security uh, reduce time to the market while if you are using your own traditional uh, services you actually have to deal with longer time to reach to the market in the cloud security model uh, you actually have to pay 
for the use uh, we uh, we are actually dealing with utility model pay per pay per use model so if you are using secure services you have to pay only for the services that you are actually using so your cost is actually low while in case of traditional IT security solutions your cost is actually high now uh, related with the security in the cloud uh, there is a concept which is called the responsibilities who is going to be responsible for providing the security uh, if we have our own internal setup then actually we are responsible for providing everything for providing security policies security services uh, security mechanisms and policies mechanism for dealing with the attacks recovery from attacks etc while in case of cloud computing uh, actually we have to divide the responsibilities between the provider and the cloud services uh, users the customers so the security issues uh, which are associated with the cloud computing it can be viewed from two different angles the concerns of the cloud providers uh, who are actually providing the services in the form of software as a service platform as a service or infrastructure as a service and also we have to see the concern of the a service consumer who are actually the end users who are actually the users who are using the services provided by the cloud providers so from the provider point of view the provider must have to ensure security of its own infrastructure as well as the client data and applications that actually resides on the service agar a provider hai so you have to be responsible to make secure your own infrastructure and your infrastructure is your uh, is your servers uh, your storage devices networking topologies everything which include the hardware is your infrastructure so you have to make sure the physical security of this infrastructure as well as the logical security aspects of making the infrastructure secure that is actually your responsibility if you are a service provider plus an extra responsibility is that you have to make sure that the data that the client uh, is actually storing on the your service or the application that the client actually needs or actually they have installed or they have developed by using your services you have to make sure that they are secure right so uh, the role of the provider is this in providing the security on the other hand uh, the responsibilities of the consumer uh, consumer or the customer they must have to verify and make sure that provider has uh, employed all possible security measures to make the services secure now this is actually something uh, which in most of the cases uh, you will not be able to find if you are a security expert or an IT professional maybe you can query the providers about the security services that they are offering however if you have no expertise then you have to hire someone uh, for example an experience an expert person uh, could actually guide you or maybe if the cloud service provider is an experienced uh, provider or if they have expertise or if they are famous one then you can actually rely on the services that they are offering to you so the relationship uh, between the consumer and the service provider is important in making or in establishing a robust uh, security services you have to trust on the service provider and the service provider have has to make sure that they are actually implementing the latest security patches the latest security policies in uh, making their infrastructure as well as making the user data secure so provider must have to establish a trust uh, relationship with it with it with its customer with its consumer and that is very much important if you have a good relationship with your customer which mean actually you are having more customers 
uh, and the customer are going to to use your services uh, based on the security trust that you have established with your customers so in providing cloud security both the parties should have a clear idea about their own responsibilities toward security management uh, to understand the risk in term of uh, how providers actually implement and manage security uh, the consumer can employ technical experts as I mentioned uh, or they can actually uh, trust on the providers if they if they have expertise in their area or if they are famous service providers where uh, you can actually trust them uh, ultimately it is the responsibility of the consumer to ensure the safety of their applications and data since a large part of the job uh, moves toward the providers end and most often a consumer actually have very little control over the entire environment S more specifically if we are talking about the public cloud and if we are uh, talking about the application as a service or software as a service level so there you have a very little control right so uh, there is actually the responsibility of the customer of the consumer to ensure the safety of their applications well uh, so actually uh, who is responsible both parties are responsible for making the system secure now let us move to some of the threats which are related with the cloud security Uh, in the previous lecture we talked about different threats uh, which are available which are actually uh, intruders are making use of different threats and different malwares to attack the security of a system so the conventional security concerns uh, that we already studied uh, they are actually also present in the cloud computing systems and threat is actually an event that can cause harm to a system or harm to your data or information it can actually damage uh, the system reliability and it actually also demote uh, demote is opposite of promote so it actually demote the confidentiality availability and integrity of information which is actually stored in the data so anything that is harmful for the system and for the data is actually a threat and threats are actually designed uh, to decrease your system reliability to damage your system reliability and actually uh, to to demote the CIA trade of security so threat can be uh, as we know uh, it can be malicious software uh, for example uh, software that actually alter the sensitive data or it can be an intruder for example different hackers uh, that can actually try to to make changes to your confidential data to get access to your system resources your information by performing different types of attacks like uh, masquerading like denial of service uh, like phishing etc so plenty of tools are available to them uh, but that is not the only causes of uh, damaging your system sometime accidental events uh, such as unintentional deletion of a file or maybe sometime problem arises from erroneous calculations as well so these are also some aspects uh, which actually cause damages to the system or to the data so the threats to cloud computing infrastructure have to be studied from different perspective from malicious software from different uh, intruders from accidental events etc although almost all of the threats uh, that are present in the cloud computing they are actually present in traditional computing environment as well however some of the threats security threats in cloud computing they are actually present only in the cloud computing you can say that cloud computing has it 
it has its own issues its own threat security threats uh, they are different from date uh, which are available in the traditional security systems or s traditional networks so uh, generally uh, speaking the threats in the cloud computing they can be categorized into three different categories the first category is uh, called infrastructure security or it can be called as threats to the infrastructure well uh, virtualization is a key concept in cloud computing which actually protects uh, the computing infrastructure of the cloud to some extent but at the same time it actually brings a new sort of uh, security complexity uh, which need to be handled very uh, delicately uh, what I want to say here is that a virtualization is one of the reason which actually make the infrastructure available to different types of threats so infrastructure uh, security or threats to the infrastructure it actually describes the issues that are related with controlling access to the physical resources uh, which support the cloud infrastructure so infrastructure security can be further classified into three categories and they are the network level the host level and the service uh, level uh, security so actually uh, the application level the host level or network level infrastructure security threats are there in the cloud computing uh, so we are going to to study uh, these threats to the infrastructure uh, one by one so the first threat related with the infrastructure is at the network layer level or we can say the network level security so the network level security risk they actually exist for all computing services whether it is software as a service whether it is a platform as a service or infrastructure as a service the network level security risk exists for all type of cloud computing services uh, basically it is uh, it is not uh, the service being used but rather the computing the cloud computing deployment type for example whether you are using a public cloud whether you are using a private cloud a hybrid cloud or a community cloud the threats are there the network layer threats so it is not actually the service it is actually uh, the the computing deployment model that you are using for example if you are using a private so the threats are different if you are using a public so the threats are different and if you are using the hybrid so the network level security threats they are different uh, normally speaking uh, there are no new threats or vulnerabilities or risk associated with the private clouds apart from those already uh, been there if the organization uses a private extra net in a place well an extra net is actually a controlled private network like intranet that allow access to the authorized outside users enabling businesses to exchange information in a secure way normally a subset of the information is actually accessible from an organization intranet however uh, in case of the public cloud services a use of appropriate network topology is required to satisfy the security requirements so actually the threats are more uh, dangerous for the public cloud deployment models rather than the private cloud employment models uh, so uh, organizations have to take care about how uh, their uh, internal network topologies will interact with the service providers network topology so ensuring data confidentiality integrity and availability they are actually the uh, responsibilities of the network layer infrastructure security management uh, data confidentiality risk 
is generally reduced uh, by using uh, well-known techniques like encryption, like digital signature. But the problem of data availability at the network layer, it actually causes more difficulties and needs more attention uh, to manage. So if an organization can afford on-premises uh, level security of the private cloud deployed as on-premises on or at some provider's facility, uh, depends on the potential of the infrastructure architecture. Either it could be deployed by some third party or enterprise itself. So in case of public cloud, it actually depends entirely on the provider. So uh, in summary, uh, in the network layer security, we have two aspects. Uh, one is related with the private setup and one is related with the public. So if you are using a private setup, uh, you can actually manage the security uh, services by incorporating different techniques like encryption and digital signatures. Uh, you have two options. Uh, you can actually manage these things by yourself or you can actually uh, take help from a third party or, uh, or a broker, for example. However, in case of the public cloud, it will entirely depends on the provider, on the service, on the service cloud service providers. Uh, our second subcategory of the threats to infrastructure is related with the host. So that is why it is called host level security. At cloud a service providers and host are actually the physical machines. So if you are a cloud service provider, so the host for you is the physical machine, the server, uh, the actual server, the actual physical machine, uh, not the f not the virtual one. So uh, in this case, uh, actually no new threats occur to the host, which are specific to the cloud computing. But as we are using the hypervisor, so the hypervisor actually added a new layer of protection. So weak implementation of uh, access control mechanism to the hypervisor, actually it creates troubles for the physical host. Like you can make secure your host like traditional security mechanism, but due to the uh, hypervisor, uh, which is a concept which is related with the cloud computing and virtualization. So this imp a weak implementation of this hypervisor uh, will actually uh, make more trouble for the physical host. One of the problem that I need to mention here is called the VM escape problem. It can actually cause damage to the physical host as virtual machines are a little prone to uh, to these particular security threats associated with the virtualization technology. Uh, actually the virtual machine uh, escape is the process of a program breaking out of the virtual machine on which it is running and it will actually interact with the host operating system so it will actually make the security mechanism uh, breakable the important point here is uh, is uh, that uh, to note is that against a traditional computing uh, environment cloud is actually tied uh, with the with the capacity of hundreds of computing nodes because of this virtualization which actually means that any threat is is easy to amplify quickly which is called the velocity of the attack uh, factor so the responsibility of host level security management for different types of consumers of the cloud uh, they actually vary. For example, for uh, software as a service and for platform as a service, the services are different while for the infrastructure consumer they are actually different. For software as a service and for platform as a service consumers, uh, the service providers would not uh, publicly share the details regarding their host platform like which operating system they are using uh, which security management mechanism they are using actually to secure the host they have to keep this information secret otherwise if they make it public hackers may exploit uh, those details to break the security mechanisms of the system so if you are a provider and you are offering software as a service and platform as a service you have 
to make sure that you are actually not disclosing the information about the operating system about the security mechanism policies the algorithms that you are using to make the data secure you are actually not going to make them public otherwise the hackers would uh, they, they know uh, the security how to break uh, security mechanisms and how to break how to enter into the operating system by using big doors or other mechanism if they are publicly available hence for the software as a service and for the platform as a service uh, the service provider actually take the entire responsibility of making the host secure uh, the customer the consumer has no role to play in making uh, the host secure uh, well uh, one different between the platform as a service and software as a service consumer arises from the differences in access rights uh, to the abstraction layer that actually covers the operating system on which the applications are running this abstraction layer is actually not accessible by the software as a service consumer but it is actually accessible by the developer who are actually using the platform as a service uh, but the platform as a service user actually cannot access this abstraction layer directly rather they are uh, giving indirect access to the layer uh, through APIs application programming interfaces uh, so what I want to say here is that if uh, in case of software is a service actually the user has much more lesser control uh, while in case of platform as a service the user will actually gain access to the abstraction layer but not directly they will get access with the help of an API so in general security responsibility of host in platform as a service in software as a service uh, largely depend on the service provider there is a summary and actually this is uh, a big relief for the consumers uh, not only from security management headaches but also uh, beneficial uh, from the standpoint of cost if you are using these two services actually you have to pay less and you do not need to worry about the security mechanism management etc the whole responsibilities is on the shoulder of the provider okay now in case of infrastructure as a service uh, the security which is related with the host uh, in this case uh, is different from the security of the previous two like the software as a service and platform as a service so unlike the previous two approaches here we have to share the responsibility of uh, securing the host between the two parties uh, service provider used to take care of the security of the physical resources uh, through the help of abstraction uh, but uh, the the consumer must have to take care that uh, no malicious applications could try to break it you have to cooperate as a customer as a consumer with the cloud service providers uh, and lastly the third uh, subcategory of threats to infrastructure is related uh, with the with the application with the service so that is why it is called service level security here both the consumer and the service providers have their share responsibilities of security management uh, at this level so no application can harm actually can harm the infrastructure so uh, also we have uh, three levels here infrastructure platform and software let us talk about the infrastructure as a service application security first at this layer uh, the users are largely accountable for managing and securing the virtual service the servers they work with along with the providers just like the previous cases in infrastructure as a service uh, we actually share the responsibilities but mostly who is responsible the users are actually responsible for their virtual servers uh, which they are using at this level the virtual servers uh, which are delivered by the providers they are actually owned by the consumers and the infrastructure as a service providers they blindly serve the applications running over those virtual servers so they actually trust the consumers 
without verifying any threats they know that their consumer will not harm their servers however that is not always the case therefore uh, the majority of the responsibility related with the security management of the virtual resources at this layer uh, is the task of the consumer but they use uh, to get guidance and uh, security assistance from the service provider how actually they can make their virtual server secure in most of the cases the service the service provider will actually provide different sets of softwares to the clients to deploy on their virtual machines however uh, the the infrastructure service provider they actually also need their own security mechanism to make their infrastructure secure they could not blindly trust on the users if a user is actually uh, trying to make the virtual machine secure the infrastructure as a service providers will mainly ensure uh, that uh, for example any attack to the virtual resources can never penetrate into the physical resources if something if a damage happened to the virtual server it will remain there it will not spread to the physical machines or to other virtual machines so there is going to be the responsibility of the provider so here we are actually um, uh, we are actually distributing the responsibilities uh, between the two parties while in case of the platform as a service application level security uh, here the security uh, can be actually divided into two stages uh, that is securing the platform as a service platform itself and securing the consumer applications which are deployed on the platform as a service so you have the platform and you have the applications you have to make secure both of these components the service providers they are actually responsible for securing the platform service the platform itself the software stake of the platform uh, this is the responsibility of the provider to make sure that they are secure because uh, the, the consumer they are actually going to deploy uh, their software their application on top of the platform so this is the responsibility of the provider for securing the platform uh, and the software stake however security of uh, security management of these applications which are actually deployed on the platform as a service is the consumer a prime responsibility although the platform as a service provider take care uh, any kind of dependencies between the components so uh, in case uh, some third party applications are used for example by the client then the third party application provider may have share of responsibility in securing the services so it is the liability of the consumer to actually understand the dependencies as well and lastly the software is a service uh, application security uh, in this model it is the responsibility of the provider as I mentioned earlier uh, the user the consumer the customer have very little control so all the responsibility is of the provider to manage the complete set of applications they deliver to the customer to make them secure each and every application therefore uh, the software is a service uh, providers they must take suitable measures uh, to make their offering of different services application secure so that consumers uh, will uh, with uh, with uh, intention or unintentionally they could not harm could not cause any harm to the system or to the data so from consumer point of view it actually reduces lots of tensions because every uh, the, the, the provider is actually responsible for everything so the consumer responsibilities are reduced and they actually do not need to worry about the security and privacy aspects of the data the consumer are only responsible for the operational security management of the application which actually includes like authentication and access control mechanism rest of the things uh, the the provider is responsible well uh, these three were uh, sub threats of the infrastructure but we also have a fourth component and that is something related with the physical systems so safety and security of the physical system itself
that is also necessary so apart from the above three issues uh, the infrastructure is a service service providers they are actually uh, responsible to take care of some other issues as well to make sure reliable cloud uh, services any general physical or technical problems may cause the physical service to go down and hence the cloud service losses it pays as well so that could this could be a loss of availability of a service uh, which can harm even the business itself if your service is down if your ser if the service is not available to the customer you can actually uh, there are chances that you will lose your customers so for 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 to solve these issues actually the providers have to take several steps for example facility of uninterruptible power supply or generators must be available for for the cloud for the for the data centers uh, similarly uh, proper safety measures against fire or any uh, natural disaster or man made disaster any facility to deal with such uh, disasters could be available uh, adequate co adequate cooling systems and ventilation facilities must be there to make the machines uh, cooler to keep them cooler and operational all the time uh, similarly um, uh, you have to restrict a uh, physical access to the servers like it could be only authorized person uh, who can actually get physical access to the machine unauthorized person must not have any access to the prohibited areas where the servers are actually installed so the physical protections are listed here uh, it should also be maintained for the uh, for all of the network related devices not only the servers for example the routers the switches the hard the hard drive the cables the access points the base stations etc everything need to be uh, secure in order to avoid any threats to the infrastructure so this was the first type of security now our second type of uh, threats they are actually related to the information that is why it is also called information security in the cloud well uh, apart from the conventional threats to information uh, uh, that we studied uh, in the previous lecture the cloud computing introduces a uh, new security concerns as customers uh, both organizations uh, or individuals uh, their data stays under the control of a third party cloud provider so that is the main reason that we actually need extra security mechanism uh, an information system security policy deals with a number of critical issues and all those are uh, justifiable concern in cloud also uh, on one concern of the cloud service consumer is related to the unauthorized access uh, to confidential information and the and the data theft itself in cloud computing there must be a policy for securing data both during the transmit the transfer and also when it is kept in rest on the hard drive uh, the provider must have to make sure that the consumer data is secure whether it is stored on the hard disk and it is secure while it is transmitted over the internet which is an insecure medium so the fundamental principle of information security remember they are CIA uh, they are important pillars of the cloud uh, software security or information security as well so CIA tried uh, it should be managed carefully for securing of any information system uh, so remember the 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 three fundamental principles of information security the confidentiality we talked about it in details in the previous lecture uh, let me remind you that confidentiality actually it deals uh, with the issue of uh, preventing intentional or unintentional leakage of the sensitive contents the sensitive information uh, there should always be a defined policy a clear policy for confidentiality maintenance to to prevent unlawful disclosure of the information 
and in order to maintain the confidentiality uh, of stored information that is information in rest information stored on the hard drives uh, two potential concerns uh, need to be addressed the first one is related with the access control mechanism to protect the data which deals with authorization and uh, authentication and the second the second concern is uh, to maintain the secrecy of the data for information in transit why when it is transmitted over the internet uh, policy specification should determine who can exchange what type of information so the secrecy of data must be maintained here too mm, uh, the secrecy of data is generally maintained by using uh, different encryption techniques uh, and you know what is in uh, what encryption is that is actually the conversion of the plain text into cipher text at the sender side and uh, decrypting decryption of the uh, of the secret information to plain text at the receiver side uh, so actually to maintain confidentiality of the information and to make uh, a secure cloud system uh, we need to address these issues so we can actually make encryption make use of encryption for achieving the confidentiality and also traffic analysis which is another type of technique uh, for information in transit to maintain confidentiality uh, the measure should be taken against the traffic analysis attack where the attacker try to get insights into the information by analyzing your traffic so traffic analysis investigations uh, investigates uh, actually uh, for sudden change in traffic activity for example rate volume source or destination of the traffic which may indicate uh, it uh, is some incident in uh, some incident or an attack is actually taking place so if you have a uh, traffic analysis technique in place uh, you can actually make use of uh, different traffic activities like the rate of the traffic generation uh, the volume of the data generated who is generating the traffic the data who is actually the destination of the traffic the data by all by analyzing all these activities traffic activities uh, you can actually uh, identify uh, if some unauthorized uh, events are taking place or not so counter measures against this attack can be taken by making uh, by masking the source and destination host and by maintaining a near cost rate of traffic flows and similarly uh, you can achieve the confidentiality with the help of covert channels uh, hackers intruders they often try to receive information by establishing a secret communication paths and those secret communication paths are known as covert channels they generally do this by studying the timing of the message passing or uh, through utilization of some vulnerabilities a covert channel is actually a path which is established uh, to illegally pass information between elements of the of the system uh, so a uh, covert channel actually exploit the weaknesses of the system uh, that has been designed and actually utilizes the system resources for uh, evil purposes uh, which uh, they were not intended for uh, covert channel possesses security threats in cloud computing so processes can uh, convert any communication path into a covert channel by exploiting the system security flaws so in cloud compute computing we actually uh, use virtualization and virtualization aid protection to the physical resources however a covert channel can break the iso isolation of the virtual platform so that is something very dangerous so dynamic nature uh, of the cloud environment also causes the risks uh, which are related with the covert channel problem so covert channel particularly they exploit uh, imperfections in the shared resources as well so uh, uh, we need to be aware of these uh, these these attacks which are related with the confidentiality and then we have the integrity which is actually related with the information security and integrity you know is actually the protection of information against changes against corruption to the data integrity of information it actually guarantees uh, guarantee against uh, intentional or unintentional alteration in the contents of the message 
and for that information can be encrypted to maintain confidentiality right so uh, for using con using encryption you can achieve confidentiality but for integrity you need other security mechanism uh, so uh, a loss of integrity in information it can actually happen due to different attacks attackers can actually alter uh, the contents of the message uh, or they can perform modification to the message uh, it could either be accidentally as well you can actually change the content of the message accidentally so integration of information uh, can be uh, protected through strict access control policies access to information is generally restricted uh, by installing uh, or by taking measures like firewalls or like IDS intrusion detection system hey unauthorized person are not allowed to enter into the system if they are not able to enter into the system they will not be able to make changes to the data so you can inst actually install a firewall or intrusion detection system IDS to make deal with uh, with such type of issues and lastly we have availability which is another issue which is related with the uh, threats to information and availability actually ensure uh, reliable and timely access to the information it actually guaranteed that the information is available when it is needed by the customer one of the attack on the availability as we discussed in the last week it is the denial of service attack so a system must implement reliable network security mechanism for such type of attacks like denial of service attack and also there is uh, a much more harmful effect of such attack that is called distributed denial of service attack so availability to information in cloud uh, it act largely depends on the cloud service provider own availability normally uh, the service provider uh, they should be up or they should be available 99.999 percent of the time but hardly any cloud service provider can offer the desired five nines of uptime uh, in general uh, reputed service provider they can actually ensure uh, the delivery or del they actually they are able to deliver or achieve the three nines of uptime not the five so they uh, for example Amazon uh, promises that they will offer their services or their service availability would be 99.95 percent so here we have three nines and not the five nines uh, so uh, information could be available to the customer all the time our last threat is about access control and that is also called identity management and control access so the trust boundaries actually expands beyond organization own control especially in the cloud computing environment so we need proper authentication and authorization management for application in cloud and it is a vital issue for security so the cloud computing model itself has some unique security concerns uh, associated with which uh, surfaced uh, due to sharing of infrastructure or multi-tenancy features as well so when cloud is deployed outside the control boundaries of the consumer organization it actually brings new set of security concern so uh, when uh, security of cloud is talked about it mainly focuses on public cloud deployment which covers all of cloud related security aspects so identity management and access control uh, which is oftenly called is IAM or identification and access management they are the primary functionalities which are needed for any secure computing system and the benefits of this IAM approach is that proper execution of uh, IAM technique it actually improves the system operational efficiency through automation of user verification processes and it actually protects uh, the uh, it actually protects a system and it actually enhances uh, the security 
of its application and information against harmful attacks. So the I am uh, process uh, support a business roughly comprises of the following activities like identification management. Uh, it is a way by which users state their identities to a system. Uh, through the identification, user actually establish uh, their accountability uh, for any actions performed in the system. And the identity of a user for a system is managed with the help of user ID or sometime user name that you actually provide and it must be unique in this system. So identity management is like using your username or your IDs for, uh, for getting authentication uh, into the system. And then we have the, beside from the uh, identification management, we have the authentication management, right? Uh, this is actually a verification of the user identity for a system. That is called authentication and it checks the, the validity of the claimed identity and is commonly implemented by asking a password, for example, or a PIN, or a secret code, or a key, or during login, or through fingerprint, or to retina, or uh, remember we studied plenty of authentication techniques in the previous lecture. So you can actually use any of the authentication mechanism in order to validate a user. Uh, beside from authentication we also have the authorization management and that is different from the authentication in authorization it actually decides uh, the user level of access right to functionalities or resources of a system and is determined after a system establishes a uh, user identity or and authentication mean after authentication the system check what are the uh, the valid operation that you can perform what are the available rights that are available to the uh, to the user and also we have the access management which actually deals with the execution of the organizational policies and pre-stored system privileges in the access control uh, when an entity a user or a process a request for some computing resources so whether you are allowed to access those resources or not uh, this is check in the access control list and their permission is granted based on those uh, on those uh, policies that are actually stored in the system and we also have the accountability aspect uh, accountability establishes the concept of uh, non denial of activities it is like the non-repudiation uh, which you studied in the previous week. Uh, here an individual cannot deny the activities he or she has actually performed in the system. If you have performed any transaction then you are not able to deny that you did not perform the transaction. So it is the system capability of identifying a particular individual uh, from uh, his her actions and behaviors within the system uh, by using audit trials and logs file for example and lastly we have the monitoring and auditing uh, user can actually monitor and audit and also report the compliance issues regarding access to the resources based on the defined policies of the organization so I am has a key role in the cloud uh, identity management and access control uh, they have high value in the cloud computing uh, since uh, with the adoption of the cloud services uh, an organization uh, trust boundaries may move beyond their own control so the boundary extends into the service provider domain and this transfer of uh, of information from private uh, domain to the public domain it actually a loss loss it actually loss of control and this loss of control is a challenge for the security of the cloud and it is not controlled appropriately if it is not controlled appropriately then it may get in the way uh, the cloud services are adopted so both the service provider and the consumer they actually have roles to play in controlling these means uh, service providers for example they must have to provide uh, utmost effort towards implementation of the IM uh, policies in order to protect and consumer have also roles to play in controlling these uh, IM uh, in controlling access 
uh, to the to the to the applications and to the data so service provider they must have uh, to to utilize their efforts towards implementing IM uh, mechanism in order to protect their cloud computing environment their infrastructure their physical services servers their physical servers uh, and other resources from from malicious activities right so they have to make sure and more specifically in the public cloud environment this become very critical as the entire computing environment resides it's some remote place outside the network boundaries of uh, of consumer organization so from consumer uh, organizations end uh, this loss of network control can be compensated by the implementation of proper user access uh, techniques uh, like authentication and authorization so identity management in cloud computing require a robust authentication authorization and access control mechanism if these services are available you can say that I am in the cloud is in action at present it is implemented by using modern technologies like uh, administra administering the biometrics uh, or any other authentication or authorization techniques uh, or you can uh, actually you can also use smart cards uh, you can actually govern the resources access uh, by providing different rights to the authorized users and other plenty of other options are available okay uh, I am in the cloud is actually user identity here is uh, is checked by using different techniques for example uh, we have single sign on we have federated identity management and we have uh, federated identity management versus single a comparison between the two so uh, in the single sign on mechanism in this user authentication pro process actually we are trying to solve the problem of uh, repeated login to access uh, different applications for example let me give you a simple example you are using Gmail uh, you are also using Google Hangouts you are also using Google Classroom you are also using Google Meet these are different applications and each and every application require a sign-in and sign-in is the process of providing your ID along with your password so different applications uh, where user is individually known to each and every application so the process of single sign on will allow you will permit a user to access these multiple applications where user identities is enrolled by signing on only once if you are signing if you take sign in to the Google now with the single sign in you can actually access your Gmail account your classroom account your hangouts uh, your calendar uh, your meetup etc whatever service of the Google of whatever service the Google is offering uh, you are actually able to access all those with a single sign on uh, single sign on process so the application may belongs to different enterprises but should be part of a group that is also possible that you are actually you can actually access uh, different uh, applications of different enterprises with a single uh, login uh, but we also have another technique which is called federated identity management or FIM in short it actually enables uh, the the linking and distribution of identity information across different applications within known trust boundaries a simple example uh, you can actually access uh, your Skype with the help of a Skype ID 
as well as with by using your Facebook ID for example or by using your live ID or sometime you are uh, accessing a website and it asks for registration and instead of providing your data your name uh, ID password uh, mobile number address etc it asks you to provide credential from other applications like LinkedIn account like ResearchGate account uh, like uh, your Facebook account you can actually take login by using your existing accounts well-known accounts so that is an example of federated identity management uh, it is a kind of agreement that can be made among multiple enterprises to allow the user to use the same identification information to obtain access to the applications of all enterprises in that group so the use of such system is sometimes called uh, the federated identity management or FIM or sometimes the identity federation uh, identity federation actually refers to uh, the way of connecting multiple identity management system of different enterprises together so in FIT or uh, federated identity a user credential remains stores at the home organization the identity provider only when the user try to access services of some other enterprises within the known trust boundaries he or she need not to provide the credential uh, to the other providers uh, he is already logged in into the application of his own enterprise so you do not need to provide your credentials to the to the second uh, application or service that you are actually accessing your credential are actually stored on your home organization your identity provider which is actually uh, with whom you are registered so instead the application of the other enterprise they trust the home organization because they have a contract they actually trust the home organization to validate the credential that you have provided so in order to manage uh, the users of distributed applications uh, through which the organization maintain internal and external supply chain system uh, the identity federation is an emerging practice and it is used uh, too much in today's internet and used by different services providers if you compare the two approaches federated system uh, with a single sign-on uh, they may appear same to the end users but they are actually different in both the users log in in some applications and then can access multiple applications or systems without logging in again so in this concept they are the same however the background of the single sign on and the identity federation they actually work entirely in different ways like in federated system uh, a user of one enterprise get enrolled in the home application only that means he or she can only be recognized by the home application all other enterprises under that federation agree to accept the identity and authorization supplied to them from the home application a uh, user need not to get enrolled or registered in those systems applications and those applications remain unaware of the user's actual identities uh, so in federated identity system they are uh, based on single credentials stored to obtain access to multiple systems while on the other hand the single uh, sign on approach a user need to enroll uniquely to each of the applications or systems that come under uh, a single sign on group but all of the applications of the group agree to rely on a single sign on for example you have to register for a classroom you have to register for gmail and you have registered for other services so as uh, a single sign on allow the end user to provide their identity and authorization details once during logon and provide access to all the application based on that single logon so the key point of the concept is that although user credentials are stored with multiple applications they need to provide it only once to get access to all of them during an active session so in summary federated system uh, user authentication and authorization are checked only once by the home application another application of that federation actually trusts that 
but in a single sign-on a user authentication and authorization they are actually checked by each application but without prompting the user to log in again so there is the main differences okay now exploring access controls uh, this is something uh, which I will go fastly uh, to explain it access control is basically a procedure or a policy that allows and disallow or limits access of user to a system access control uh, is inherently attached with identity management and is necessary to uh, defend the confidentiality integrity and availability of data in the cloud computing uh, the access to the computing environment is actually determined by the deployment model as I mentioned earlier which type of model you are using so while uh, the public and community cloud deployment follow shared access policies both these cloud deployment they actually follow shared policies while a public so uh, while sorry the private cloud deployment maintains uh, actually exclusive access uh, access strategies uh, let me explain it from the figure uh, here we have all the, uh, the the different types of clouds for example the public the community and the private cloud on premises and off premises and here we have access control access control is actually uh, the uh, the procedure or policies that will allow or disallow or in some cases provide limited access to a resource or to a system to appropriate users even if you are authorized user you are not possible you are not allowed to perform all the tasks your the tasks that you can perform are actually limited so uh, it depends on the type of cloud computing model so from consumer perspective access control in cloud application need to be planned based on the organization security policies uh, such policies actually the state's management intention uh, concerning control of access to data and applications and identifies people who are authorized to gain the access uh, if you see uh, we uh, in the public cloud and the community the access is actually shared while we have exclusive uh, access in case of the private cloud model <coughs> Uh, there are three important points uh, which are related with the access controls and these are degree of control the first one is the degree of control sorry uh, there are three points that are actually threats to a system and they are the system weakness against those threats and the risk that those threats may happen which are being considered while designing any control uh, access control policy or mechanism so the degree of control is important access control protection uh, it actually protects the information from any unauthorized or unintentional modification so planning and implementation of access control is a rigorous task and it needs a uh, budget as well uh, per requirement so the effort and cost of implementing access control have to be decided and it actually depends on the merits of the information being processed hence organization must estimate the value of, of their information before deciding how much control uh, on access is actually required so the value of information is determined through different qualitative and quantitative processes and then these processes uh, contain uh, factors such as uh, the effect the effort the values of products or the acquire the information the worth of the information and so on so uh, you have to decide what degree of control uh, is actually required on the customer on the consumer end well uh, these were some threats that we studied uh, and now uh, we are moving to another topic and that is actually related uh, with uh, the cloud design so whenever uh, you are designing security 
policies for the cloud you have to follow some principles and the fundamental principle of uh, security design approach for f of any information system it remains valid for cloud as well uh, what I want to say is that the policies the design principles that we actually follow for traditional system we can follow it for making our cloud secure as well however uh, uh, we need to maintain a balance between uh, providing the cloud security services as well as the performance of the system. Why? Because intensively secure cloud system may ultimately deliver poor performance feature. So there must be a balance. Well, some of the uh, security design principles they are mentioned here for example least privileges uh, this is something uh, very obvious like a uh, least privileges providing least privileges is a principle which actually state that any subject whether it is a user or a process it should always be assigned minimum required privileges to perform its task a time limit should also be set to bind the period for which the subject can the subject can hold a resource to complete a task uh, we will try to understand this uh, principle with the help of a simple example for example you have an online bank account so what is the least privileges the least privilege is that uh, you actually you are not able to transfer uh, the money to someone else by default or you are uh, your credit card is not able uh, you are not able to buy some things uh, with your credit card by default you have to activate it similarly for any transaction performing any transaction online you have to activate it first so you have access to your account but with least privileges due to security reasons if you want to perform a transaction you have to ask for permission and time is also a critical uh, factor you can ask them to provide you the extra privilege but for for example for 30 minutes or for one hour or for one day after that uh, the privileges will be taken against uh, another example is that for example you are traveling to another country and the least privileges is that that you cannot use your credit card or, or debit card outside your own country so if you are traveling to some country you have to to explicitly tell the bank the time period uh, for which the credit card or the debit card would be allowed to be used uh, outside the country uh, that should be a period of one week or one month etc so that is the least privilege and that is a design principle you have to provide least privileges to the user to the customer by default and it actually reduces the opportunity of uh, any uh, bad practices and prevent unauthorized access to the sensitive information second design principle is uh, defense in depth <coughs> and it is uh, a principle which state that uh, you have to provide multiple layers of protections multiple layer of security and this actually enhances the safety mechanism for example if one layer is breached for security the subsequent internal layers actually defend the attack and provide the protection to the system so multiple layer of security and an example is that uh, when you take sign in uh, to, uh, to the bank account you actually require to provide user ID and password but if you are going to to perform a transaction then you have you are required to supply another pin code and that must be different from your password so that is like an extra level of security or they can send a pin code uh, to, to your email address or to your mobile number and then you provide it at the time of performing the transaction so there is an extra level of security so uh, the defense uh, uh, 
in depth principle is actually uh, saying that you have to provide multiple layers of security in order to enhance the safety mechanism and in cases for example if one layer of security has been breached then subsequent internal layer security can defend the system uh, from the attacks the third principle is fail safe uh, system failure sometimes causes scope for breaching the security it become difficult to strictly maintain all of the access control principles while recovering the system a taker may utilize this room so fail safe principle says a system should be safe of any security threat even if it crashes and it should ensure that the safety of information is not compromised even if the system fails from other angle it can be said that the system recovery from failure should 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 take it to a secure state before the system failure the system was in a secure state now after the system has been recovered it should be in secure state it should lead the system to a secure state in order to prevent any unauthorized access our fourth principle is economy of uh, uh, mechanics uh, mechani mechanism and it is a simple design of uh, security mechanism so it actually state that you have to keep uh, the design of the security simple uh, a simple design of security mechanism it actually reduces the chance of going wrong in understanding and implementation of the design principle so you have to keep things simple and there is a simple principle uh, in engineering there is uh, a famous saying which is called K I S. Uh, keep it simple stupid you have to keep things simple but not so much simple that they are easy to break uh, so this is known as the economy of mechanism uh, which says to keep the security design as simple and simple simple and small as possible uh, another principle is called the open design uh, there have always been debates on the strength and merits of security design those are kept secret and those that are make public they that are make open for example uh, in encryption techniques one opinions opinion is that undisclosed algorithm make it more difficult to break while another point of view, view is that reveal the algorithm for review by others is a better option because it creates more chances of uncovering flaws in it so in cloud computing uh, a multi tenant and utility service provider where high security is the key the open design principle suggest to architect uh, such a model where security of the system uh, does not depend on secrecy of its design what does it mean uh, we have actually two different views uh, the first view is that you have to make the algorithms for example that you have used for encryption uh, you have to make it available to the public it must be based uh, your algorithm must be based on publicly available uh, security mechanism or algorithms because they are more secure while another point of view is they to know actually an undisclosed algorithm or security mechanism is much more secure because the attackers have no information about the, the working mechanism of the algorithm as it has been kept secure so it is difficult for them to break into the system or into the algorithm however for cloud computing services as multi tenancy is a multi tenancy environment uh, the suggested approach for security is to go for the open standard a least common uh, sorry uh, yes a least common uh, mechanism is another principle and uh, it actually discourages the sharing of uh, similar security mechanism among different components a very simple example you cannot use the same password for for all your logins so when security mechanisms are 
common among the components the whole system become unsafe if security of one income uh, this is very simple you have to keep uh, for example different password for for different applications or for different services uh, separation of privileges uh, this principle suggest to break a single privilege among uh, multiple independent subjects so that more than one authorizations are actually required to perform an action uh, this actually protect the system from some one evil's intention uh, for example uh, it is related with uh, defense in depth principle that you can actually you have to provide uh, a different uh, level of securities for performing different privileges for example for just for reading information you require a single level of privileges but but for making addition for making ad Uh, for editing for making alteration to the data you actually require a second level of privileges a weakest link like the old saying that uh, a chain is only as strong as its weakest link so the security of any system is also as good as its weakest module attackers always try to identify the most fragile part of the whole protection system in order to start their activities in order to enter into the system so the security system should be revised again and again to detect and resolve the weakest part in the security chain uh you do not have to be focus on the strongest component of the security you have to be cons your concern are going are are related to be uh, are related with the weakest point of the system security what are the weakest point what are the big tools you have to identify uh, the the malware in your code in your code you have to define the weakest entrance point the weakest the weakest the open ports uh, which actually leads the attacker to enter into your system so your focus should be on identification on the detection and resolve and resolution and res and resolving such weakest parts or points of the of the of the system to make it more secure Uh, the second last principle is psychological acceptability uh it actually state that the acceptability of the system for its authorized user should remain as simple and easier as it was in the absence of the security mechanism simply it mean that the design of the security mechanism should not complicate the usage of your system the user must not face difficulties in using the secure system or the user must not face difficulty in using the system introduced by the complexity of the security mechanism so any complexity uh, should remain hidden behind the scene from the user there is a psychological acceptance and finally uh, we have another concept and that is related with uh, Uh, authentication management and we talked about authentication in much more details uh, so these were some security goals uh, design goals that we need to <coughs> consider okay uh so from the discussion till now uh, what we observe <coughs> is that providing security in the cloud <coughs> is a complex task not only for the providers but also for the consumer so uh there is a service which is called security as a service remember at the beginning of this course i talked about you that we can actually offer anything as a service in the cloud and one of them is security as a service so organizations can actually outsource the resor the security management and responsibility to some third party service provider they can actually uh make the security they can actually take the security steps for you on your behalf you have to pay in order to avail the services of the security as a service so the provider deliver it as a cloud service which is known as security as a service a uh, security as a service is built a uh, hosted 
and managed by third parties, brokers or service provider. Like any other cloud service, uh, the business model of security as a service is also subscription based or utility based. Some of the services that you can actually avail uh, as a security as a service, they are mentioned here. The first one is email filtering and as the name indicate, uh, in this uh, service, uh, the organizations actually protect incoming uh, emails from spam, from phishing, uh, phishing emails and from malware by filtering them and also the from other security threats so you can actually scan the incoming emails by using a third party service uh, it is also used to filter the outgoing emails from an organization when an organization want to ensure and restrict the unintentional uh, departures of any malware infected emails for example uh, you want to keep checks on the employees so you can actually uh, hire this service of email filtering uh, in order to filter the outgoing emails. Uh, similarly, you can uh, filter the web contents as well. Uh, web traffic filtering facility of uh, uh, of security as a service, uh, it can actually uh, be utilized to scan the contents of the web. An organization outgoing web contents can be delivered, can be diverted to this service where the content is checked for malware threats or for sensitive information for example banking account related data or intellectual properties and other data that can be filtered with the help of a service that is acquired uh, by the by the by the organization from a third party Similarly, vulnerability management is another uh, security as a service uh, which you can actually avail for your organization and there are uh, security as a service uh, provider who actually provides this service uh, who uh, will help you in assessing and detection of vulnerabilities in the system and also in the information. So they also provide uh, the remedy of those vulnerabilities and ensure that the system operates securely. And lastly you can also use identity management uh, for example apart from uh, vulnerability management and data filtering facilities another offering is delivered as part of security as a service which is identity management as a service and it actually facilitate user identity management by providing a centralized and thus worthy source of a user identities okay lastly uh, we have to to talk about uh, privacy and security the heading here is wrong sorry for that uh, the slide show actually different types of attacks which are uh, potential for the cloud computing so these are different types of attacks actually not privacy and security uh, for example some of the attacks that we saw early like the uh, denial of service attack like the phishing attack uh, and like the like the hijacking or hyperjacking attack uh, we also have some other type of attack like uh, data leakages and brute force trying all the words in the dictionary etc so you can actually have a look on these different types of attack uh, I am going to talk about privacy and security what are the differences between the privacy and security until now the discussion was about security but there is also another concept of security uh, another concept uh, which is actually related with security and that is the privacy of the data people often think that security and privacy are the same thing however they are actually different but tied together security and privacy are not the same but they are tied together privacy is about less regulation like what data are you collecting about me and what are you you going to do with that data how you are going to use the data with whom you are going to share the data where are you going to store the data how long are you going to keep my data all these issues are related with the privacy so privacy you can say 
is about the personal data and it is about how we give up our personal data in exchange of some services that we want to use whenever you want to use a service a service you have to provide uh, your private data your personal data for example if you want to buy a book uh, online so I understand that I have to provide the vendor my name my address my credit card number for billing my address for receiving the book and so on I trust that the book seller will not use my information that I have provided for any other reason so that is the point that actually I am trusting uh, the the bookseller that he the bookseller will actually maintain the privacy of my personal data so there is something private while security on the other hand it is impersonal security is not concerned with what is collected and how it is used rather security actually guards the personal data so for example uh, security is uh, is like a wall around the castle and just as there can be many different walls around a castle there could be many different walls different levels of security around your personal data and companies actually spend lots of money on these walls so these two things are different but they are interdependent on one another for example there is a point and the point is like this if a system is pretty secure but it doesn't respect your privacy for example they sell out your data then you will probably not use it although the system is secure but they do not respect your privacy so why you are going to use it for understanding security and privacy uh, let us consider another example uh, let me show you yes here we go look at the picture what you see a couple inside a home and some workers working on securing the home but removing the privacy so consider a window in your home it provides various functions however it is also vulnerable for protection purposes uh, you can actually put steel bars in front of the window for security reasons these bars are good for security as they are hard to break but they are not good for privacy why because uh, you uh, other persons can watch you from the outside so you are not uh, you cannot do private things uh, inside this home while on the other side uh, windows with shades they are good for privacy as they prevent anyone from looking inside but they are not good for for, for security so a uh, privacy refers to an organization's uh, responsibility to use personal information only for purposes that people approve of on the other hand security means to put safeguards in place to ensure that the confidentiality integrity or availability of information is not compromised so security is actually maintaining the CIA uh, security also provides assurance about the custody or the storage of data against uh, unauthorized access it will also take care about the reliability and accuracy of the data and it will make the data available for the authorized user whenever they need it while privacy on the other hand is the appropriate use of information so everyone should use any information provided to them only for the intended purposes for example an e-man an e-commerce e service should not reveal its customer email addresses or any other personal information to the third party for business or any other purposes 
violating trust by sharing someone's personal information with other without prior approval is the violation of privacy. So security is necessary but not sufficient for addressing the privacy. Even uh, the best security control mechanism may not have any impact on the privacy protection. And here is our last uh, figure about security and privacy and last of the course as well. Okay, we have the, the Facebook CEO and we have an advertiser and on the other hand we have a customer. <coughs> So the customer is happy that Facebook is taking privacy issues seriously. But what does Facebook do? Hey, he's conversation he's in a conversation with an advertiser agent with an advertiser, advertisement agency, the CEO of an advertisement agency, right? And he's telling actually the personal information that he's the nudist person. He's actually married. His annual salary is 75k he's a drinker blah 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 so the advertiser now can send advertisement based on his interest right and this is very obvious sometime on your screen you can actually see advertisement about things that you are actually doing these days sometimes you get strange how the internet knows about you there are different stories behind it I will left it over left it to you so uh, this was the last lecture of the uh, cloud computing course uh, but we will continue uh, with some other topics on the on the on the YouTube channel so stay tuned for more lectures I hope you have learned something from this lecture and from this course uh, I tried my best to deliver my best so uh, see you with some other topics Till then, Allah Hafiz.